Hello students, in this video we'll discuss several special curves, cycloids and trochoids, and discuss problems from physics that those curves solve. So let's consider a circle of radius 1 rolling along the x-axis. And so what I'm going to do is, here we go, there's the y-axis, there's the x-axis, okay? And the circle is going to start over here at the origin, and I'm going to figure out what happens to a point. So here's my unit circle over here, so let's draw it like this. Okay? So what's going to happen is my circle, I'm going to take this special point on the circle at the very, very bottom over here, and the circle is going to roll like a wheel. So the circle is going to move like this into a later point in time. Later on in time, the circle will move over here. So same circle. And that point will be, this pink point over here will rotate along with the circle, sort of like a wheel, so a point on the wheel. So that will move to a different point over here. So that point will move like right over there, and so we'll keep moving. So we'll keep moving the circle down and down like so. Keep moving it again. And that pink point will continue to move, right? Moving higher and higher and higher and higher. Eventually it will reach the apex point, right? And then it will start doing what? And after it reaches this apex point over here, at the very, very top, has a, a pi revolution, it'll start to what? It'll start to come down again. So you're going to curve like this. Okay? And the question is, is how can I parameterize this curve? So question, how can we parameterize this curve? And so the answer is, let's do this very slowly. So let's consider what happens over here. So let's draw the picture again. There's the x-axis, there's the y-axis. And let's draw our circle. So let's just suppose that it starts over here at the origin, and let's draw this circle a little, a little while later. There's our circle a little while later. And let's suppose that we have the point over here. That's where the trajectory of the pink point went. Went over here, went up, 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 up to that point, that's where it's traveled along. And now we know it, make the following observation over here. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at the center of this circle. Right over there, that's going to be the center. And we're going to draw a line down over here. And we're going to connect the center of the circle to that where the pink point is. And we're going to make a right triangle over here, like that. And then we're going to make the following observation. As I've traveled along, I've moved this far in my arc length over here. So that arc has been traversed. I've moved that far along on the arc length. So that angle, let's call the angle over there theta for the arc length of this unit circle, right? The circle is radius 1, so I'll maybe make that observation. So this is going to be a length of 1 as a unit circle. And then if that angle over there is theta, if this arc length is theta, then that angle over there has to be theta. And then this length over here along the x-axis also has to be equal to theta. Let's think about that. So as the circle rolls, how long is how, how much is it rolled? It's rolled as much as the length of arc. So that length over there is theta. This length of arc over here is also theta, and that angle is theta. So I have three versions of theta in this configuration. So now I want to put the coordinates on this point over here. So that's my point x, y, x, comma, y. I like to know what that point is as a function of theta. So x is some function of theta, y is some function of theta. <clears throat> So how far over, so now let's carefully look at this triangle over here. So this triangle over here, this length right over here, will be what? That length is exactly what? That's the adjacent angle, so that's the cosine of theta. And then what's this, uh, this horizontal length over here? This horizontal length over here is exactly what? Is exactly just the sine of theta, okay? So let's use that to our observation. So what is the x value going to be? Let's look at the x value along this curve. So what will the x be? The x is going to be what? Well, it's this total length of what? Of theta minus this what? Minus that, that horizontal piece of the triangle, sine of theta. So I take this whole length of theta and subtract off the sine of theta, I will exactly be at what point? I'll exactly be at the x location of the curve. So the x coordinate is the whole chunk theta minus the little chunk sine of theta. So x is going to be theta minus sine of theta. And what will the y be? 
well, what's the height of this thing over here? The height of this ping, of this ping point is the total height of the radius of the circle, which is one, minus that little height differential of the triangle, which is cosine theta. So my y will be one minus the cosine of theta. And so as theta goes between zero and two pi, that will give me a full revolution of this cycloid. So for theta between zero and two pi, zero less than theta less than two pi is one full revolution is one. revolution of the cycloid. Okay, now there's a modification to this. The modification to this is if the circle has radius r, if the circle has radius r, the circle is rolling, then it becomes what? Then it becomes, it's homogeneous, so it's become x's will be equal to r times theta minus sine theta, and y will be r1 minus cosine theta. Now, this cycloid is very important in physics. It satisfies two interesting questions, problems. The first question that this curve solves, so the, well, the, it's not quite this curve, it's the flip of this curve, but it's close enough, right? So it solves two problems. The Brock is still Crohn problem. And the Tata Crohn problem. The Brock is still problem is interesting. It says, if you have a curve between two points, I'd like to find the curve that moves a particle down from point A to point B as quickly as possible. That's the Brock's own problem. This curve has no what? This curve has no friction on it. So if a bead slides down this curve, how can they go from this point over here A to this point over here below it B as quickly as possible? The inverted cycloid will do that. And the Tautochrome problem is very, very similar. What that says, it says, can you find a curve such that no matter where you place your particle on the curve, the time to reach the bottom of that curve is the same. So if I put the, if I put the particle up here, or the marble up here, the time it takes to get to the bottom is the same as the time it takes to get to the bottom at this point, is the same as the time it takes to get the, the particle to the bottom at this point, et cetera, et cetera. That's the Tautochrome problem, and the inverted cycloid also solves this as well. Because if we look at this curve over here, the cycloid looks like what? The way I've configured it, the cycloid is doing what? It's going up, 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 down, and it's going to repeat itself over and over again periodically. But these two curves over here that I've drawn look like the cycloid, except just what? It's just flipped over, so there'll be a change of parameter. And the site, we'll see in future videos that the uh, solution to both these problems is an inverted cycloid. Thank you very much.